Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget Benny 5 on checkout. This week, we're not working on the Crestor at all. It's just sitting there because we needed something to fill the gap. But we are going to put the uh, Chinese R160 back together. Full disclosure, I did cop out and send it to a gearbox shop. But we're still going to show you what we're going to do to put the cases back together. I just came to the realization that for what it was going to cost me, um, it wasn't worth risking damage to it. Um, shout out to Gearbox Express, actually, Frank down there. He took the job on no questions asked. I was very concerned that having already had a go at it myself, no shop would want to touch it. Um, but yeah, to his credit, he was like, yeah, no worries, bring it down, we'll have a look at it. Um, they turned it out in about three or four days for me as well. So I dropped it off and picked it up within a week. So that was pretty awesome of them to uh, turn that out for me. And back by popular demand, the GoPed, I was actually surprised how many people were interested in that. So we are gonna take it out for a ride today and do a top speed run. John doesn't know it yet, but I've actually bought a second one. So, gosh darn. Um, We'll see how that goes. It's a little bit slower, so maybe it's more to his flavor. But uh, yeah, we're gonna put the uh, gearbox together, then screw around the scooter and go for a ride. So uh, let's do it. Gosh darn. Yeehaw. You're gonna learn today. Uh, back to the opposite Sorry. of ASMR. Gian's favorite sound. We need to put sealant on that. Give it some Seems like everything needs a bit of a Sure does. <laughs> Makes your day better, a bit of <laughs> Take that as you will. We haven't even talked about the fact that the input shafts all changed. I mean, people know that, but we haven't talked about it. Yeah, we may as we well. We should probably talk about it. So the input shaft's been changed. That's all the old bits in the box. Great wall bits. And just to recap. Toyota bits. Yeah, cool. Bigger, had to machine the snout. I wanted to put grease in that back bearing because it's been washed. Only because it's probably going to run dry for a bit when the box gets put back in the car. Actually, I might even put a bit of grease on that one. Oh, damn it. Got silicon. Is this the kind of job you need like seven hands for? No, I don't think so. So it's got dowel pins or sleeves actually that locate that case. So I'm just going to do a couple of D-clamps to just nip that up. Like just get oh, it like snug. pull it together. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got to do it kind of in stages because otherwise you're just going to pull it and and then it will just be not square. That's in its happy place. <sighs> I know people are gonna be disappointed that I didn't do it myself, but the reality is I don't have the equipment and it was actually pretty cheap. It was like literally a couple hundred bucks, so. It was definitely a risk versus reward type of thought, like how much money is it worth to potentially damage the gearbox? I don't blame you for it, but I'm sure Someone will. Well, I for one am outraged. Yeah, but you get easily outraged. <laughs> BMW driver things. Yeah, I know, right? Easily yeah. outraged. Hard to get to use indicators. Maybe that's a direct result of being outraged. I heard you took your BMW to the um, mechanics once because it had this weird flashing light on the dash. Turns out it was actually the indicator light. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. What a satisfying thunk. Yeah, looks like a gearbox almost. Almost. All of the bolts, all of the time. Uh, I think all of the time's probably a lie. You're saying that I'm missing bolts. Did you take a bolt? You are literally the I would hold a, hide a bolt guy. Nah. Yeah. Never. Only for like 10 minutes though. <laughs> You'd be like mildly annoying. Like I'll hide the bolt have a five minute lull and then just put the bolt back and never mention it. I reckon I could never keep a straight face having done something like that. You know one of those where you're like, the one person that pulls the prank and like has to put the, their hand over their mouth to stop the smile? Yeah, heap subtle. God. Can't get silicon on my new shirt. That's a nice shirt by the way. It is a nice shirt. Team Quite Valvoline. Like it. Here's some more ASMR for your gearbox. What's an ASMR? I don't know, but you can get a puffer for it. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a bit. So bad. I thought it was alright. Now you being a dad though can get away with stuff like that. So good, hey. I'm sure someone will get offended by it. So now I've got to work out which bolt is not the bolt for the front cover. That one, maybe. I don't know, that one. Triple one, that's the speedo drive bolt. I did buy I flag mean, tip pliers. You probably don't even need them for this snap ring, but purely because I bought them, I'm gonna use them. 
I mean, you literally don't need them. Get your money's worth, damn it. Close enough, I've used it. <laughs> Clean any oil residue off before you're gonna reseal it. Just gotta be careful when you put this on to get the seal neat. Uh, Heaps, man. I swear I don't have a bolt. Where's the bolt? I haven't yarn? hidden it. Do you see Go me? On. I'm not even smiling. I've manifested it. <laughs> Where's the bolt, Gian? Wherever you last put it. The release bearing actually replaces one of those bolts, so I'll let you get away with that one. <laughs> this time. So if I get the clutch, I can put the input shaft bearing locating pin on. That's what we want, this sucker. I don't really know why there's two of them. That'll work. Oh look, no touching, no oh, grinding. So good. So good. I might as well put the snout on. How do you figure out how far along that shaft is? Gotta measure it. it. Well, it bottoms out, but then on that thread, you've got to set the height of the actual clutch. Right, so that piece goes exactly there. So that goes there, because it sits against that shoulder. And then the concentric bearing, you adjust the height of that to suit right. the compressed height of the clutch, or the installed height of the clutch. Currently just putting it on for the sake of having Yeah, a look basically, right. yeah. I can't set the height until we actually measure the clutch in the installed height, but I kind of want to put it together just because I can. Yeah, fair. Looks pretty. Did you choose the purple? I did not. So X-Clutch used purple on, well, have had for a long time on everything. Because that dowel, I'm actually going to knock into the transmission once it's bolted up, because it's clearly not gone all the way into the case. Like it's just kind of sat, uh, yeah. not engaged. So you want to punch that down through into the case because it's not actually lined up there. This, this one? Yeah, that one. So now that's engaged on both halves. And that is done. Do you think that oh. there'd be a drill that would have like the torque settings on it? An impact gun. Is that what that is? Yeah, we can change, you can change different, like power. I wonder what auto stop is. Let's find out. Don't know what auto stop is, but it's not stopping. So you got one so real tight done. bolt by the sounds. Yeah. And that's only flopping around like that because we don't have our reverse lockout and our detent in there. Which coincides with actually bolting it into the... In the car, yeah, because we've got to work out the clearance. I've got some bits for the LS now. So we've been talking about doing the 403 lit, uh, cubic inch stroker. Yep. And the cam and valve train package that was in the engine previously probably won't really suit what we're going to do, so... Sent the old uh, boys over at Kelford an email and they've sent us some bits and pieces. I don't actually know what they've sent yet because they kind of spec it. Um, what have we got there? Got some valve spring. Oh, dual valve springs, nice. And I'm going to go with their probably lifters being that there's oil on that box. And the magic stick. <laughs> Is that the one Ian refers to as the womp stick? Yes. Good old Ian. At least with it being upside down, you're not pulling on the thrust side like it, as if it was still in the car. That's why it's always safer to roll your Commodore over. When you do your cam and When home. you do your cam. And then just get some friends with a forklift to flip it back on its wheels once you're done. That's good advice. This is where the magic happens. Just to clarify, the magic happens in the workshop. Does it? Well, I mean, here it does. That's cool, actually. I haven't actually read a um, Kelford cam card before, but it actually lists all the other parts to run with it. That's pretty cool. Let's have a look at it. This is one of those things that you shouldn't open. Probably. No, double wrapped. All laser etched part numbers. Like a lot of cams you see, they're like hand engraved and sometimes you can't even read them properly. But these guys are all laser etching. So is the diameter of these rolly bits like bigger? The lobes? Yeah, the um, lobes. So when you say diameter, you mean like the height of it? Like does it push something down? And does it push it down a little bit more than so standard? So there's three different ways that the cam can make more or less power. You've got um, basically valve timing, valve lift, and duration. So duration is 
the time that the valve is open at full height. Um, the lift is the measurement. Basically, you measure on a camshaft, they have what's called a base circle. So you measure across the lobes to get your base circle. Then you measure the total height, and then you take the base circle away from your total height to get your lift um, at the camshaft. But the, the lift at the cam is never really relevant to the lift at the valve because more often than not, you have a, a ratio in the rocker arm. Um, typically, they're between 1.2 to 1.8, depending on your, your application, like tons and tons of different engines. Um, another good way of, of getting more lift is actually changing the rocker ratio. Um, I know, like from playing with minis back in the day, they always had, um, everyone called them roller rockers, but you could get different ratio rocker assemblies, uh, which more often than not had a roller bearing where, the, um, where it engaged the valve uh, rather than just a solid tip, so it was more efficient. Um, but yeah, you can change the way your cam works also with the rocker ratio. If you can, if you can change the rocker ratio, you can basically make your cam have more lift. It won't really change the duration, uh, but yeah, you can definitely get more lift by changing the rocker ratio. Uh, but yeah, pretty excited to have uh, this stuff in the car because yeah, it's um. Oh, should put the should put the safety wrap on it. <laughs> Yeah, it's Kelford's such an awesome place. Like they do so much development in house. I was fortunate to tour the Kelford factory. Actually, I was in Christchurch for Ian's wedding, and yeah, we were just googling. I just assumed that Kelford were in Auckland, and as it turns out, they're just outside of Christchurch. Um, fun fact: in Christchurch, the higher scooters don't go to Kelford. They're geo locked. You can't go all the way to Kelford on higher scooters. Don't try it. How did you find that out? Um, I don't know. Just. Random fact, <laughs> let's just say when you hit the geo fence at 40 k's an hour, it's not fun. Oh, what? Like Self the thing just locks up. Wow. Like literally we had to carry it like 100 meters back inside the geo fence so that it would work again. This knife needs a new blade like yesterday. Let's have a look at the other stuff while we're here, why not? Most of your previous words went over my head, so I'm sure I'll ask the same question again yep. eventually. But yeah, just smile and wave, as they say. <laughs> and Kelford say these are good for about 72, 72, 7300 RPM. So uh, the, the whole package is good for that. So um, having really good springs obviously is a, a lot to do with being able to control the valve train and it not running away. Because um, valve float or uncontrolled valve will definitely damage push rods, lifters, cam. Um, you can yeah do all sorts of damage if, if that's not working together. Uh, especially on a, on a pushrod style V8 where you've got a lot of valve train parts moving. Um, overhead cam stuff you can sometimes get away with a bit more. Um, but yeah, having so many more moving parts with the pushrod set up, uh, yeah, it can definitely get away from you. So you said 72... Ooh, we've got retainers too. You said 72 to 73,000 RPM. 100. 100, sorry. 1,000 is a lot. 1,000, would, it would be a lot. Ooh, and valve stem seal. Man, this is a really good setup, hey? It's got valve stem seals, titanium retainers, and collars for the base of the double valve spring so that you can actually retain the inner spring in the correct spot. And they're really nice, eh? Hey? Are you gonna go for 72 to 7300 RPM or? I will do whatever Scotty says because yeah. we're gonna have to retune it. And there's actually no point revving an engine if it's not seeing any benefit from it either. Yeah. Like I was gonna be quite conservative with this build because um, the goal is actually not, as much as I really, really, really want to rev ELS, the goal for me is to actually make power and have more um, mid-range torque, because as dumb as it sounds, the six liter was a bit flat in the mid-range. Um, now, I don't know if that was due to um, the previous cam not really suiting what we wanted to do with it, um, but yeah, it was a bit lacking uh, in the mid-range. It was kind of, it was just an off-the-shelf cam that we kind of just chucked at it, so, yeah, there's every chance that it wasn't spec correctly. Like, we actually spent a fair bit of time with Josh at Kelford um, discussing the goals that I had for the car. Um, even things like the weight of the car came into play, um, the target RPM for the engine. Um, I did actually say kind of 6,700 RPM, 6,800 RPM. Uh, but he's like, oh, no, this will, this will spin to 72, 7,300, no worries. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've definitely got options and our stroker kits actually arrived at Empire as well. They're going to be balancing it or having it balanced. And once it's balanced, we can tear the other one down and have a look at it. 
Um, I'm going to try and arrange to go to Empire and actually tear it down with Omar and see if we can work out um, what happened, like why it's lost the oil pressure. Because um, it'd be nice to know that before we go and put it back together again. Um, I'm pretty confident it's a clearance issue, as is he, but we still want to find it because, yeah, I'm not keen to put a third engine together and then have something go wrong again. Because it's just it's just annoying having to put the car together, pull it apart again. So and expensive. Yeah, that too. Well, I mean, it shouldn't really damage anything majorly. Like, I don't think there's any major damage in that engine even now having low oil pressure because it didn't have no oil pressure. It's just low. So, um, yeah, hopefully the stock crank's good because it's still worth something. Um, yeah, we'll probably flog that off. Good old marketplace. Uh, but, yeah, super stoked to have these here. And uh, now we're going to play scooters. <laughs> Take my scooter to the dairy. Mm. One scooter. Oh, you've got a smaller saxophone today. Yeah, I did get a new saxophone. You know why I bought a new one rather than mucking around with that one getting it coated? Because that was actually like half the price of getting that one ceramic coated. Yeah, okay. Because the problem is I've got to get the chrome stripped off that, then I've got to get it sandblasted, then coated. So by the time you went through that whole rigmarole of getting that done, it was like $300 and that was like $130. Yeah, mad. So like... Wait, is it the same size? It's quite a bit more compact. Yeah. Is that going to be louder? We'll Don't see. Know. Yeah. Just to clarify, you are going to ride this today. Yeah. And show on it on camera. camera. <laughs> and you're going to ride the other one. And maybe this one. Oh, no. Nah. Don't be shit. Uh, I don't know. Don't disappoint the people. Someone's got to film you riding them, though. Yeah, but then I'll film you riding them. <laughs> you can't just, like, bail out. You're better than that. Don't, don't disappoint the people. I don't want that rage. They won't be angry, Gian. They'll be disappointed. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. Yeah. Just for the record, I looked at the tra at Travis Kelsey as, as a photo, and I'm like, I don't think I look anything like that guy. Ah, oh, okay. But thank you. Just catching the two-stroke. How is your footy going? It just sits on the shelf. <laughs> People are going to be like, oh, another scooter episode? How did we get here? By popular demand, that's how. People asked. People... Uh, you know what, I've really thought that uh, like two people would watch that episode and then the two people that watched it would be like, how did we get here? What yeah. happened? That was my thoughts whilst editing. Yeah, it's like, why did you do this, Benny? Like, how did you go from an eight second drag car to working on a, on a two stroke scooter? I don't know, but here we are. And now we're here for round two. So soon. Like, another one. Like DJ Khaled's gonna pop up in a minute. This new pipe comes with brackets to go to the frame. I don't think they're actually gonna work because I don't think it's designed to have the clutch like with the new kit. Because it comes with two brackets, one goes to the frame, one goes to the engine. Mm. So I think I'll just have to put the one that goes to the frame on, up to the engine on. Right. But to be fair, that's still 100% more brackets than the old one. I like the instructions that it comes with. So this is interesting, like this particular setup actually has like almost like a mini exhaust manifold. So you bolt this on first. Do you feel the power yet? <laughs> Don't think this pipe is gonna change the power level. I just like that it's a bit more compact. Remember we did the set the air gap on the coil? Yes. So the last time I bought um, some bits, I noticed that the seller had factory, like an actual Zenoa pull start spacer filler gauge. Oh, pull so start, it's... sorry, coil spacer feeler gauge. Like, so there's actually a factory one. With the right gap. Use. Yeah. I mean, I think the gap I used was correct anyway, but it's much longer and wider, and I think it's stainless, so it's not going to be um, held there magnetically. Because the problem is that coil is just a big, massive magnet. I see. Well, the thread locker works. Oh, I didn't tell you. The day we put this back together, I rode it around. Mm. And I was flat stick and it just locked up. I thought I'd killed the engine. And it turned out the one part we didn't touch, which was the centrifugal clutch, someone had obviously, whoever assembled it, had stripped one of the bolts that went between the clutch and the, the crankcase. Oh, and that clutch far came out. I uh, saw the bolt came out and jammed itself oh, into wow. the clutch. And then it locked the engine solid, locked the spindle. So oh, I, was, I was probably doing like 30 or 40 k's an hour and just the back wheel just locks oh, up. Man. Full handbrake. So I'm like, sweet. At least it was the back wheel, not the front wheel. Yeah. I fully pulled the whole thing apart oh, that man. night. Oh, man. Because at home, just in bits on the bench. 
because I thought I was like, oh, I've killed that brand new engine already. Man, you're dedicated. Scooter's not a toy, it's a way of life. <laughs> step aside. I'm sure step. some people would agree, but yeah. I'm also sure they wouldn't watch this channel. Step through or step aside, bro. So if you have a look here, he's only covering part of the, the trigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to space the coil out to make sure that all of these um, laminations at least get to that um, the metal that's bonded into the aluminium pulley or the flywheel because we could potentially be losing spark energy. I could be also totally full of shit but um, I feel like that that is worth for the two minutes of mucking around and the other thing I've got is an upgraded ignition lead. Laugh at me if you want, but it was cheap and I was buying other stuff off them anyway, so here we are. You're supposed to use a heat gun. Probably. Fire is so much more satisfying. Yeah, I feel like if you use um, heat shrink and you're not using fire, you're kind of on a, you're like, you're not really doing that good of a job. Don't overcook it. You're overcooked. Stick a fork in him, he's done. <laughs> is that a five star leaf reference? How would I know? <laughs> I'm just putting one washer on to see where that gets us. I think it's got the whole. Fine. It's got the whole um, coil on that bracket now. I feel like this is thinner than what I had the other day. That obviously brings the coil closer, closer to. Yeah, which should mean more spark. In hindsight, I probably should have put some fire sleeve on that before I assembled it. But even that, like, it's very close. Like, it's touching that ignition boot constantly. I think I put the crank, the coil cover back on, and see. My God, people are gonna be like, just finish the friggin' scooter already. <laughs> are you gonna keep the other one stock? Yeah. So then you can ride one without <laughs> crying all the time. <laughs> I cried once. That's all, that's 100%, so that's all the time. <laughs> Truth. I mean, sugar, <laughs> Whoops, you got me. Shazam, gosh darn it. Apparently they did an experiment where they tested people's pain tolerance, where they were allowed to use swear words mm. versus not. Yeah. They had to, you know, sh say sugar and so salt and... So five. Yeah. <laughs> and? And the results were swear words, real ones. Increased pain with, tolerance? Help with your pain tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Added swears for comedic value. <laughs> I could not swear and you could bleep it and no one would even know anyway. Why Unless they can lip read, then I exactly what I... Why do you keep saying the F word over and over? Have you dealt with people on a daily basis? <laughs> I'm not locked hiding this yet because I don't know where we're going to end up. Hopefully not face down on the ground. What, off the back of the scooter? Yeah. Oh, I'll be fine. So it goes there. So there's, I mean, there's room. There is room to sweep that forward on that bracket. And that's before I cut anything up. Oh, you're planning on cutting things? Well, I'm thinking I can shorten that. If I shorten I this piece a little bit and that piece a little bit, I'm just really trying to get max clearance on that plug. Because if I go... Ah, oh, so you're trying to push that unit forward a bit. Yeah, if I can push the whole muffler forward. I mean, even there's not bad. I see. But like it that's would, pretty good. It would open I'd up I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I mean, we probably don't even need that bracket, to be fair. It's just very chunky. Because like I said before, the other one had no brackets at all. And this has two mounting well, points at the moment, right? Well, one. If I go the way I'm looking at it, it's going to have one. Mm. One being just this point? Yeah. Because that'll tuck in there, no worries. Does this get extremely hot? Nah. Not, enough, not hot enough to burn. I mean, it'll be colder than the muffler. Okay. So, either way, it's a bit of a win. Wire tucked go pad. <laughs> Your mates. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take that one. Honda people? Yeah, sure. They're all right. What? Nothing. <laughs> Poor Hopco. I actually love his car. <laughs> oh, good. And it's a Honda. Everyone? It's the only one I like. K-swapped. No, that's not true. K-swapped EK. I would happily have a DC2 any day. Oh, wow. But it'd have to have the JDM front, though. Yeah. JDM front for like the Like the Aussie front or the, the non-type R front. Dirt. They just had it so right and then they didn't. I actually don't even hate Honda's. It's just the most 
we just went with that one day and the internet just latched onto oh, it. I see. So I just let it roll. Yeah. Wow. The truth comes out. The truth will set you free, Gian. Whatever that means. Oh. Coming out hot. Seems to be the whole theme of the scooter. You know the only really, really, really annoying thing? The fold down handlebars aren't going to work anymore with that power no. pipe. No. That was my favorite bit. Yeah. Lucky your one still has it. My one that's actually yours. It's still going to be always known as your one because it's the wimpy one. <laughs> did you say the wimpy one? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> God, you tried to say it quietly enough like it would slide Yeah, by. so that people would catch it, but you wouldn't but notice it till I the edit. I didn't hear it? Yeah. No, I got you. Joke's on me. You're the one editing it, so you're, you can make me say whatever I want. Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Vavilin and Sparesbox. Don't forget Benny5 on checkout. Today, I'm going to sell that Cresta, and I'm actually going to buy a Honda Civic, which is located somewhere over there. Some people say that they're slow, but they're actually fast. Compared to somebody that replies with, I'll let you know. Get real smart and use some AI bot instead of real Benny and... Maybe you already are. <laughs> hey, mate, maybe you're the one that actually likes scooters and I'm not, I don't even exist. Kind of annoying that I had to cut that, but I want to have good engagement. Yeah, that's bad actually. Bite's on the plug now. I want to just tuck that in as neat as I can. That's a bit lazy, like it's just a 90 when it's not really a 90. Look, I feel like I can go pretty hard on cutting that bend down. I probably could have cut that down a little bit too. This end? Just shorten it, yeah. That's right, it'll work. I'm gonna take the carby off. I just wanna look at the way that that throttle linkage is set up on it because I think there's different holes and you can actually change the ratio of how the throttle works, like shorten the, effectively shorten the bell crank. Because at the moment, you hit full throttle in the carby way before the the throttle linkage tops out, so you're kind of bending the mounting bracket every time you go full throttle. So you've got all these different holes for different applications, like it's not just for a scooter. This carby could be on a hundred different things. You can't move it because the hole's been, someone's drilled that out, like that's been done. That's not standard. I see. That's annoying. Yeah, I'm just gonna chuck it back together. Oh, that's handy. I think the later model ones they just have bolts instead of having the studs welded to the frame. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, I could. Run it through the frame. Yeah. How does it secure, like, w to clear the tire on the inside? Well, it literally just pushes through the frame, like. Ah, uh, it relies on the tension on the other end to. Yeah. I see. Screw it, we're going there. The GoPad wizard's new. I am but a, a vessel of their genius. Toit. Genuine parts. I wish whoever drilled these holes drilled them in the right spot. Close enough. Really not conf like confident about that ignition lead, hey? In what sense? That it's actually engaged in the coil pack. I see. Why does it not make that nice noise when it... Unplugs? No, like on the other end, like if it's actually making, like giving me spark. Right. How do you find out? You just plug in the fuel and see if it starts? Yeah, we'll do that anyway. And then worst case, we'll just have to pull it apart. Pour the fire water back in. That's so weird that you can see the fuel vapors. Mm. I'm sure there's a scientific explanation behind it. It's evaporating. Oh, is that sim that simple? Yeah. There you go. Thank you for your scientific explanation. Science. That tire, mind you. Amazing what happens when you put fuel in. That exhaust manifolds probably changed oh, really? the mixture. I see. That's so annoying. Have to tune it. Well, not really. It's just carby two-stroke things. I wonder if there's such thing as an EFI two-stroke. Yeah, two-stroke and small engines are fully banned in California now. Oh, wow. Because GoPeds were made in California originally. Wow. And then um, they've moved to Colorado, I think. And I can only assume they've moved because of like legislation being not able to actually sell their product in their home state. Yeah. Like you, it may go as far as manufacturing that you can't even make it. Yeah, right. I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder if oh, it was- because of uh, emissions, because California's leading the world in yeah, I see. emissions reductions. That makes sense. That's why old mate Elon's going to town. Oh, yeah, I got new wheels too. Amazing, six spoke. Billets. Dish. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, it's, um. It's gonna be tight on the spindle now with the brand new tire. I think you're literally gonna to have to stand on it to get the bolt in. Right. Might have to do a couple of burnouts just to clearance it. It's probably for the better. Fair chance. I said you have to stand on it. 
Let go of the camera. Back to you. <laughs> when you're ready. No, I can film better from over here. You only just stand on it. Not Legit right, right it. now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were kidding. When no. I, thought, I thought you were like stand on it for burnouts. Right, no. Well. <laughs> that was wild. Angry chainsaw. Shed skids. <laughs> That's hot. Oof. Do you hear the sizzle? Is that what that was? That was my hand. Oh wow. S Barbecue. Put the sweet billets on the front too. Thickness of the tires the same, right? Yeah. Billets. Uh, I thought you were gonna leave that off to flex that it was a new tank. Nah, because I don't want to damage the new tank. I see. Oh gosh. Got ya. <laughs> right on cue. And then yeah, this one's stock. That deck is really good. Yes, yeah, so that's the new deck. I wonder if it's loose because the bearings are that gack that actually needs to spin on the bearings. I'm pretty sure it was you that told me um, in uh, like skateboard bearings, you know, it's got that little like sleeve in between. Yeah. Stuff. And I just get rid of it because I didn't know what it was for. Yeah. But you're right. Then you can actually tighten and fully the nut and it you doesn't- You just crank it down, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it still spins rather than- Yeah, rather than like having, crushing the bearings. Yeah. But that is like the first generation wheel. Yeah. Like real early. And then went to like a three prong style one and even me as a kid broke the, you'd actually split the wheel. And the problem was like back in the nineties and early two thousands, like these wheels are expensive here cause it was all imported and you literally had to go and buy it from one dude. I think one wheel was like 130 bucks back then. Whereas now with the internet and cheap shipping and everything like these are, I think a wheel and tire, like a brand new wheel and tire is like 70 bucks Australian or something. So it's actually pretty cost effective. Yeah, so someone bodged this one up a bit. Like it's missing the original sleeve for that, but you can order all the parts still. So guess what? I ordered the parts. Because someone's mucked around with this, there's supposed to be a stud that that mounts on. Oh, uh, yep. And I think they've just chopped it off. Because this sleeve's actually supposed to sit lower. But they've pushed it up the frame and uh, up the handlebars. And because this is here, they've made some weird sleeve. So I've got to work out how to be able to get the headset apart. I'm sure, right. I'm sure some go-petologist will tell me. So good. Let's go and test them. Fits like a glove. All right. That's pack, so dumb. Pack the helmets. What helmet? We brought both the scooters out to uh, an abandoned piece of road about 15 minutes from the shop. Um, I wanted to actually do a almost a before and after comparison of what a stock one goes like compared to what our uh, scooter of death goes like. So uh, I've got my phone on the handlebars. We're going to do a uh, basically a max speed run with both of them. Um, fortunately, the Speedo app that I'm using logs speed so I don't have to try and look at the Speedo and not die. I can just focus on not dying. Um, that being said, this one's actually pretty slow. So um, I think Gian will even be able to handle this one. So it should be all right. But uh, yeah, gonna, gonna fire it up and uh, yeah, give it a bit of a, a power run up and back and uh, see what we can come up with. I reckon it's gonna be kinda 28 to 30 kilometers an hour will be about where it taps out at and then I reckon this thing's probably going to be like 55 to 60 because it's just, I reckon it'll be literally double the speed. So uh, we'll see. Wish me luck. That's right, there's plenty of runoff room here at least. Plenty of trees to stop you suddenly. Full steam ahead. Oh yeah, this one doesn't have a clutch either so you can push start it, whereas that one you'll never be able to push start it because you can't get a centrifugal clutch to work backwards. See ya. <laughs> Why did you say ooh? Oh, that's not true. We've got a speed spike. What's oh, no, this? I know why, because I probably had the speed app open when we drove here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's go again. Oh, so hold on, it has to recalibrate or reset. Well, I didn't reset it, so the max speed was like 60 k's an hour, which there's no way in hell it did 60 k's. Yeah, see. see. see 29 that one, kilometers an hour. 29, that's oh, pretty close. Go. That one sounds like a blower. Somebody's just operating a blower down the road, you know? Yeah, just running the leaf blower. But the other one's definitely angry chainsaw. I suppose you're not really too wrong in that regard because the capacity of this is a leaf blower, but the capacity of that is somewhat more chainsaw. There you go. Sounds like he's at top speed. Jesus! Blue. Oh no, what happened? So there's definitely a fault in that, the muffler. It 100% needs both oh, the brackets. Okay, right. Because it keeps moving back and knocking the lead off. Ah, oh, righto. Is that what happened over there when it switched yeah. off? And you, oh, okay. So we definitely need that other bracket. All in all, not a bad result, but not as fast as I thought. Really? 46. Man. 40Ks. 46. 46? I mean, it's still like... It looks wicked fast. Yeah. Like the other one didn't look that quick. I thought at least it would have been double. Oh God, it's too hot. Yeah, it does look quite Whose idea was it to wear this? <laughs> I'm not athletic enough. <laughs> Well, I'm sure I speak for more than one when I say I'm glad you did wear that. Well, I didn't come off, so go banana. I guess I'll just have to knock up a bracket. There's not going to be a third episode, don't worry, friends. <laughs> uh, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty wild. It's, it, we've fallen a little bit short of double the speed, but um, with 7cc's more than standard, I think that's a pretty good effort. Um, the thing's ridiculous. They're definitely, there's definitely some scope for carby tuning. It needs needs a bit of fine tuning, um, but more so it needs that ignition lead to